This time of year, I start having meetings with some of my attorneys and accountants about my current tax situation, where I'm at, my earnings for about five different businesses. Some are super big, some are super small. And I wanna talk to you guys about how I structure my different bank accounts for tax perspectives, for savings, for the future, for taxes, for tax strategy, for sheltering liability, lots of different stuff. I wanna talk about that today. This is gonna to be a little bit of a longer video, but if you're interested in making more money, having less tax liability, if you're interested in better structure in your life in terms of your bank accounts from a personal and business perspective, I think this is the video for you. So tag along with me, let's talk about this and let's get through this information. So first of all, what I want you guys to understand is that there's going to be really two different sort of bank accounts we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about personal bank accounts. We're gonna talk about business bank accounts. And both of them have special interest for us since both of them have their own pros and cons. And we're gonna talk about how money flows for you guys. In particular, what I'm talking to is people that probably have some sort of 1099 income. Maybe you're a sales rep for a company, you sell something, you're in network marketing. I don't know what you do, but you get a check that has not yet been touched by the IRS. You're not on W-2 income, it's a 1099 income. I wanna talk about how I structure that from that income. So we're gonna talk about that as you work for company X. That's not the company you own, you work for company X, you sell company X's products. So I'm gonna put a big X up here. That's who you're working for. And company X, they send you, you know, paychecks or commission checks once a week, once a month, what have you. And what I wanna talk about is how you break down different accounts. We can do a three bank account rule and then a five bank account rule. So you understand the different accounts that you're gonna need. So to start, I wanna start by labeling the different accounts that you guys are gonna need. The first account you need to have is called an operating account. Write that down, operating account. The operating account is literally the account that you use to operate your business. Let's say for example, I sell uh, makeup, Mary Kay, whatever, a network marketing company. If I have an operating account, that's the bank account that Mary Kay, or in this case, company X, pays the commissions to. That's the account, in a later video we'll have to talk about this, but that's the account that I have the business bank account on, I've got credit cards on, I write off my deductions on, all those sort of different things is what I deal with with, again, the operating account. So the operating account is where the money comes from company X and it hits my operating account, okay? That's account number one. Now, after it hits my operating account, that leads me to account number two. Account number two, I'm gonna simply call my tax account. And this is exactly how I do it. I'll share a story with you guys. I was on a call with my accountant last week and we were going over only one of my companies and this company doesn't do a whole lot of revenue, uh, maybe $500,000 a year total revenue, but it's got real high margins, which means on 500,000 in revenue, it will probably make 300,000 net profit. And I utilize this bank structure for that company. And so what we went through is we went into my tax account and for the quarter, the tax account had approximately $75,000 sitting in it. And so then I went to my accountant and I said, okay, this is what I have in it. Can we please run through an estimation of what I owe in taxes for the quarter and so I can pay quarterly taxes? And, and her answer was approximately $28,000. Now this was a phenomenal thing for me because I had saved about $75,000 and I only had to pay out $25,000. Now the numbers aren't perfect, in fact, I think I'm a little off because I think right now that tax account has actually 44,000 left in it, so it means that my numbers are a little off, but the point is I had over double what I needed to have in my tax account in order to pay my taxes left over so that now I have that and for the end of the year I can use it and if I don't end up using it, I can either reinvest it into my business or B, I can use it as almost like a personal like, like tax return and I can put that into myself. So how does this work? Well, let's say for example, I get a check for $15,000 from company X, the company I do commissions with, the company I work for, and $15,000 goes in my operating account. Well, my second account, which this is a business account, this is a business account, those are both under my business name. My second account is my tax account. So what I do here, just to keep this very simple, is I set up a checking 
for all of my operations. And then I set up a savings for my taxes. And what I do is I create this so that 15,000 hits. Now in this example, let's say $15,000 hits this bank account and the operating account. And of that 15,000, it's a high margin business. I don't have to spend a whole lot of money. I only have to spend $3,000. That means I've got $12,000 left over in my operation account. I haven't paid myself yet. I don't have a salary yet. I haven't put away money for taxes yet. So how do I get the money from the operating account to the tax account? Well, the answer is very simple. I keep them both within Chase Bank. What does that mean? I literally transfer operating money to tax money. I go in and I do an internal transfer from a checking account to a savings account. So in this example, I've got 15,000. I have to spend 3,000 in expenses. Now I've got $12,000 left over in my operations account. Let's say I want to make sure that I make $4,000 at the end of the month personally for my mortgage, my rent, my insurance, my car bill, my personal stuff, not business stuff. What I have to do is I have to double the amount that I want to pay myself and I have to send it to my tax account. So what I do in that case is if I want to make $4,000, I need to send $8,000 from operations into my tax. So now I've got $8,000 in my tax account. That leaves me $4,000 in operations, which is fine. I only needed $3,000 last month. I've got more than enough. And now I've got $8,000 in my tax account. Now what do I do from there? Well, I open my third account. My third account is personal checking. This is how I pay my rent, how I pay my mortgage, my water bill, my internet, my phone, my car, my gas. What I do from there is I take 50% of what I put into my tax account. I call it the 50% rule. It's very aggressive, much more than some of you guys in the comments section, I'm sure, will suggest. And I take out only half of that, which means 50% stays in the tax account for taxes. So on my personal checking, which is right here, 4000 is now here, 4,000 is now here, and 4,000 is now in operations. Long story short, I've got three bank accounts, 4,000 in operations left over after I spent my 3,000 on expenses. Remember, $15,000 came in from the company, from company X. I spent 3,000, I've got 12 left. I wire eight or transfer eight over to my tax account, okay? So then I've got 4,000 in operations, I've got 4,000 in my tax account, now that I've got that left over, I had the other 4,000 go to checking. Now this checking is life, it's expenses. This is the easiest way to structure your business. This is the easiest way to keep your finances in check. Anytime you wanna pay yourself, put 50% of it in the tax account and 50% into your checking account. That way at the end of the year, you're never being surprised by your taxes, especially on 1099 income. Now from there, you can add two more optional accounts, account number four and account number five. These are both gonna be personal accounts, okay? Account number four is emergency. I'm gonna write rainy day. This is an emergency account, okay? Account number five is investment. So what does that mean? Well, rainy day and emergency literally means a rainy day or emergency. I need to save three to six months of expenses and put it into this account. How do I do that? Well, I put it in account number four over here. This is my rainy day account. I have to take it out of my personal account. So maybe a 4,000, I only use 2,000, and I can put 1,000 here and 1,000 over here for investment. Okay, this is account number five for investment. Now what I do is I take three to six times my rainy day fund, that's it. So if my expenses every month are $3,000, I take anywhere from three to six times that amount. So $9,000 to $18,000 would be my rainy day fund. Once it hits that amount, let's say $9,000, I'm done. I no longer put money in there. I leave that account. That account's good. Now I focus on building my investment account so that when the next investment opportunity uh, the next stock market crash, crypto crash, real estate comes along, I can use that amount to do my next thing. 
So what this is, guys, is this is an overview example of how I structure my bank accounts. This is how I set up my accounts so that I not only have a great operating account that I leave excess in to operate my company, whatever company that is, but then what happens is I have enough for taxes, quarterly and at the end of the year. I then have enough to move over to my personal accounts, and then I have money in rainy and investment. Now, the one thing that you might say to yourself in this example is you might say, well, wow, that money dwindles away. It seems like I had 15,000 come in at the beginning of the month, and what you're saying is, I've only got 4,000 at the end. That's true. That's the reality of this. It proves to you that you need to make more money than you think you need to make. Oftentimes what I see entrepreneurs doing, this is the wrong way to do things. This is the wrong way. Here's what they do. They've got company X, that's the company you work for. And they create basically an operating account. It's a business bank account for operations. But the problem is they don't pay themselves. They don't have a barrier here of business to personal. This doesn't exist. So what do they do? They do all their business expenses. I'm sorry if this is sideways. All their business expenses over here and out of that same operations account, they add personal. So what are they doing? They're paying for their business expenses, but then at the same token, when they need to go get gas on their personal car, they have to pay their mortgage, they have to pay their light bill, they're pulling it out of their operations account. This is a major nugget for you and a major no-no, and hopefully for some of you, if you're doing this, this is the video that makes you stop. Let's say your company got sued. You get in a lawsuit. They're coming after the company. But then when they start to look at the books, they realize everything you're doing is also personal. You're not paying yourself, like talked about over here, to your personal account. You're not outside of this bubble. They can do what's called piercing the corporate veil. In this example, they would say the business and the person were operating in no different way. They're the same bank account, which means anybody that has, in this example, on the backside, any business assets, any business cash, anything business is also personal. They can attack you personally. In this example, it's separate. They can only go after the business because you're operating as a legitimate business, pulling draws or even running at the end of the year or during the year payroll through an S corporation. Some things we can talk about in later videos. But this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. So with that said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, do me a favor. Let me know in the comments if you want more tangible videos to show you guys how I'm operating some of my companies. I can show you tons of different stuff that'll save you guys thousands of dollars in attorney fees to help you guys get things set up so you can draw these out, go to your attorneys, go to your websites, wherever you go, go to your accountant and say, this is what I want, or do it yourself. Like this video, of course, if you like the video. Again, leave a comment with what you learned, what you wanna see more of, and of course, thank you guys so much for 20,000 subscribers. Click subscribe if you haven't, and consider subscribing if you haven't, and we'll see you guys on the next video.